Hey, today we're going to give you five simple steps to rock Angel's Landing. Now, you might be asking yourself, should I do Angel's Landing? This is an adventure hike and I'm not an adventure hiker. So I want you to ask yourself a couple of questions. Do you have a, some good shoes, a good backpack, some water? Do you have a good head on your shoulders? Do you make good choices? Are you in moderately good physical condition? And <laughs> oh, are you not deathly afraid of heights? It's okay to be a little afraid of heights. In fact, that's good for you to be a little afraid of heights. But are you deathly afraid? If you, if you could answer yes to the backpacks, the good head on your shoulders, and in good health, and then you have some good common sense, I think the answer is yes for you. You can hike Angel's Landing. Okay, so in this video, we're going to go over what to expect when you do hike Angel's Landing if you go to Zion National Park. And on our channel here, we want to give you tips and really provide useful information for you. Okay, so the first thing you need to know is just overview. This is a five mile out and back trip. So that's how long you'll be hiking for is five miles. You're going to be hiking up to 1488 elevation. So it is a steep hike. You'll be, your heart will be going. It, so it'll take on average four to five hours. That's not because it's so long, but you actually have to do a, a good deal of waiting at certain parts just because it's one way traffic. So that's why the hike will take you that long. The trail is mostly paved. You'll get out of the shuttle stop number five, which is the grotto. And then you'll head across the river. There's a little bridge that takes you across the river. You'll turn right and you'll head up the trail and you'll you'll you can actually see as you start to walk up the trail you can see angels landing in front of you and then on your right you can you see the big white mountain there the big white cliff that's called the great white throne and the reason why they're named that uh, an early preacher named the great white throne this is the the throne of god and then the angels wouldn't land at the throne of god they would land next to the throne of God and so right across the canyon is Angel's Landing that sits right there looking at the the Great White Throne which is kind of cool I think and you can see both those as you're making your way up towards the canyon or up towards the Angel's Landing. Okay and eventually you'll hit some switchbacks that start to climb the canyon wall. You get some very pretty views of of the canyon from here. Um, eventually so once you get through those you'll hike through a, a little canyon they call Refrigerator Canyon because it gets pretty cool in there which we love at Zion. It's nice for it to cool down a bit because it gets pretty darn hot. Yes, yeah, a, a narrow little canyon with a lot of shade. Uh, there's some signs there that tell you to be quiet because uh, there's some Mexican spotted owls there that are endangered and they have they hang out in that canyon, I guess. So, okay, then you'll get after you get through Refrigerator Canyon, you'll get to the final ascent, really, which is these switchbacks these crazy switchbacks called walter's wiggles there's 21 of them and they're they're not long switchbacks they're really short i mean every switchback i bet you takes you maybe 20 seconds to a minute depending how fast you are so it's not like they're long switchbacks after you get done with walter's wiggles you'll get to a little landing area called scout lookout at scout lookout there's a lot of room there uh, that people will gather as they kind of prepare to to go up the spine of up Angel's Landing. There's a restroom there. This is pretty incredible to me. This is at the near the top of Angel's Landing by Scouts Lookout, and they actually have put porta potties up here on the top of the hill. And I think they have to remove this waste by helicopter. But this is a long and challenging hike, and tons of people go on it, so they need a place to go to the bathroom. So. There you go. The only place I know of in the park that has a restroom at the end of the trail. You, the, you can take a look out from Scout Lookout. You can go look off the cliff and down into the canyon. You have spectacular views. In fact, I would say if you were really scared of heights, hike to the Scout Lookout, stop there, get a good lookout, enjoy it, and then maybe turn around. Yeah, so exactly. Even if you didn't want to do the final climb of Angel's Landing if that sounds a little intimidating to you and the heights and all that. You can still enjoy the, the hike up to Scouts Lookout and uh, and then watch people head up the, uh -huh, because, the canyon. Or head up the, the, last, the last portion, the hog's back, this is literally chains bolted to the rocks that you will hold on to while you climb up a very narrow trail with thousand foot drop offs on both sides. But the path is awesome. Don't be too scared. <laughs> Okay.
Okay, so our step by step, we have five steps to do this. So the first step is to check the trail conditions before you go. Uh, remember, you're looking at a four or five hour window for you to do this. So you're going to, want, going to want to make sure the sun's not going to be down when you're up there because it'll be dark. Someone has fallen to their death because they couldn't see. So make sure it's not going to be dark. Make sure a thunder rainstorm's not going to be coming into the horizon. And you know, and don't be a knucklehead and hike this in the winter. We don't want to be on an icy, rocky trail with thousand foot things. So just make sure you check the trail conditions before you go. That's tip number one. So step two is mm -hmm. to get the right gear to go on this hike. So let's just talk about a couple of things that you might want to you might want to bring with you. First of all, of course, you need to have mm -hmm. good shoes. Uh, you don't need to have hiking boots, but but good like trail runners. That, that have good gear. Hiking boots would be fine too, but uh, I, I don't think you need that. I think just some good grip shoes. Yeah, then you'll want to be able to carry about three liters of water. You can fill up at the grotto where you get off, so you don't need to have water for the entire day, but just for Angel's Landing, you'll want about three liters of water, especially if it's hot. So for that, we would recommend a, a camelback, so like a little backpack that you can that has a little water bladder in there you can fill up with water. Um, a hat or sunscreen, because it does, especially in the summer, it, Zion gets very, very hot. It's in the desert. Oh, and we recommend wear what you would wear to the gym. Wear some fitness clothes because you're doing some pretty, you're working out. You're going to be sweating. You're going to want to be comfortable. So, you know, don't wear jeans. That wouldn't be comfortable. But wear some stretchy pants, whatever you want. <laughs> uh, have some snacks with you. Uh, along with your water, you can have some snacks that you could eat up there at the top scout lookout or even at the top of angels landing once you get mm. up to the, the actual landing you can have a little little snack as a reward um oh, and your camera you know have a camera have your cell phone just be ready to take a few pictures yeah now along the chain section of course is where a lot of people would want to take some pictures uh, but you might be a little terrified to, to pull your phone out while you're hanging onto a chain um, so a couple of things there there are some spots even along the chain section where you can kind of step off to the side and, and rest for a little bit. Um, there's, there's actually some area there. It's not all just walking along a, a narrow sheer cliff. <laughs> um, and then if you wanted to record yourself going on there, you might want to have a GoPro or something that's tied to you um, because it's going to be, unless you're really, really, really comfortable with heights, I think it's going to be pretty tough to carry your phone and record while you're uh -huh. heading across. Okay, step three. Um, you, you do have on here trekking poles. Some people like to hike with trekking poles, especially up the hills. Um, but if you're going to do that, you would want to buy some that collapse up or, or collapse down and then go into your backpack because you, you're not going to want to have trekking poles as you're crossing the chain section. Now, some people leave their gear at, at Scouts Landing while they go do the chain section. That's, I think that's really popular. There's just a ton of people up there. Nobody's going to steal the gear, steal your gear, I'm sure. Uh, although I did hear once that a California condor stole somebody's wallet that was sitting in his... <laughs> some of the ravens and stuff that fly around there will take you here. Okay. <laughs> okay, so step three. Catch the shuttle from Zion's Visitor Center. And you're going to want to catch the earliest one possible depending on the time of year. You're going to want to catch the 6 or 7 a.m. shuttle because this hike does get congested. It does get hot. And so you'll want to be there as soon as you can in the morning. Okay, step four is to take care of your physical needs before you go. So you want to use the bathroom, fill up your water, and apply sunscreen before you head out. Um, now there's a bathroom there at the, at the grotto stop that you can use. All right, step five. Oh, step five was just to cross that bridge and start your hike. So very easy. So once again, check weather conditions. Make sure you have the right gear. Take the shuttle first thing in the morning. Take care of those needs and then just cross that bridge and get going. Someone is belching across the river. <laughs> I hope nice. you picked up. It's beautiful. <laughs> nice. Okay, let's go over a few frequently asked questions. Can you do another hike during the day? So is Angel's Landing a full day hike? Or can you do another one? Yeah. If you're in good shape, you can do another hike. Um, For sure. Especially if you start early and get done with Angel's Landing around, around noon. Mm -hmm. You've got plenty of time to do another hike. In fact, oh. we will have some itineraries coming out soon. Check our website. We're in the Rockies.com. And we'll have some, we're preparing some itineraries right now to help you maximize your time at Zion National Park. Because there are some logistics there with shuttles and gear and stuff that you need to think about. And so we've, 
we want you to make the most of your day. Yeah, plus just to help you feel confident before you go on your vacation. We don't want you fretting and worrying and, you know, we'll make a good plan for you so that you're taken care of. Okay, next one is, will I get lost on Angel's Landing? No, it is very clearly marked. There's lots of people there. Just follow the signs. Zion is very good at their signage. Follow the crowds. Yep, follow the crowds. There. You'll get there. Okay, well, uh, something I've heard somebody ask is, how much room is there up at the top? Uh, there's quite a bit of room back there, actually. Once you get up to the very top, you're going to have these amazing views looking straight down Zion Canyon. It's it's just the best view of Zion Canyon. And you'll have uh, plenty of room up there to hang out. And again, you can kind of eat your snacks if you want to, take a drink, and just enjoy the moment. Okay, the next question is two-way traffic. Once you are on that hogsback chain section, it is very narrow. And people ask, well, how, how do you handle this safely? Generally what happens is people will just wait their turn like a small group of people heading up will wait while a small group of people that are heading down will go down and then, you know, you may be looking at maybe like 10 to 20 people that'll cross one way and then another group will pass the other way. So you just, just keep in your mind that you're not going to want to rush through this, just be patient. And then I had a question here, can you enjoy Zion National Park without doing Angel's Landing? And my answer is yes, we've been to Zion so many times and we rarely go on Angel's Landing because we have kids, little kids, we don't want to take them up there. Uh, we just love it. And so don't, if you're just terrified of heights and you don't think this is for you, then don't, don't feel like you're not going to get all there is to do out of Zion. It's, it's awesome. But if you have the opportunity to do it, you should because it is an adventure hike without you being an adventure hiker. You're mm. going to see some incredible things without having to backpack an entire day or without having to climb. I mean, you're climbing, you're climbing on this hike, but not like what some of these other extreme backpackers do. So you're gonna, like I said, you're gonna get an adventure hiker experience without really being an adventure hiker. If you're, uh, if this is helping you plan your trip at all, please click the subscribe button. We have many more videos we're doing about Zion National Park. Yeah, and send and us comments area. if you have any questions or We love or, the comments. Or tips, we, just, we love them. Oh, we love the comments. And tell us about your trip. <laughs> tell us the, tell us some of the, the places that you enjoyed the most. Uh, we just love it when people talk uh, oh, yeah. and comment. And we have one little payoff for you for sticking around for the end of this video is the Cayenta Trail. Okay, so for a little extra, this is the way we did it. We got off at the Zion Lodge stop, which is stop number four. And we did the Emerald Pools hike. And then from the Emerald Pools, if you continue north, it'll turn into what they call the Cayenta Trail. And the Cayenta Trail will then turn into the Angel's Landing Trail. So we kind of did three trails at once, I guess, um, which tacked on about an extra maybe two miles to our hike. Okay. Which we didn't think was too bad. And it was pretty. Yeah. yeah, it's about a mile to get to Emerald Pools, and then about a mile to get over to where the Angel's Landing Trail starts. And, and it's really all just kind of one trail. It's not too uh, hard to miss that. So if you want... Yeah, if you want to do the Emerald Pools, tack that on there and get two hikes in one. We hope you go do Angel's Landing and tell us how it went. We are excited for you. Have a great day.